I remember the first time I read the book The Alchemist. It was about 3 years before and when I read the book I was feeling confused because I couldn't understand the hidden meanings or the concepts of that book. I was feeling bored. But I asked myself this question it is that then how come this book is such a huge success? After all this book have sold 65 million copies translated into 80 different languages set in the Guinness Book world record as well. But years later when I read the book again I was in love with that book. I read the book several times and each time I did that the book was getting bigger and bigger. But what changed in the 3 years is this. When I read the book for the first time I didn't have any dream. Neither did I knew what I wanted to do with my life. Now this book is all about having a dream and making that dream come true. It is a story of a young shepherd called Santiago who has this recurring dream that a treasure is waiting for him in the pyramids. which was about thousands of miles away from his home. He somehow gathers the courage to follow his dreams and in his journey he meets a lot of interesting people and learns a lot about the world. Now if I had to write down the quotes of this book it would be more than hundreds of them. But these are the central ideas of this book. Empower yourself to dream. It is the possibility of having a dream come true that makes life so much interesting. Now let's consider two people Keith and John. Keith sets his clock at 8 and gets up at 8:30. He's water he can find from the fridge and he's in a rush to work because he's already late and gets yelled by his boss. Now he had to do the job which he hate for the next 9 hours and once he get back home he become really toxic with his wife and now he's going to watch TV and eat potato chips for the rest of the day. Now John gets up at 5 and he don't need an clock to wake him up. Instead his dreams did. He would look at the world with all of those inspirational posters and promise himself that today is going to break his own personal record. He would run for miles towards the gym, work out for 2 hours and have a healthy and nutritious diet. After that he goes to school where he works as a sports teacher, a job which he is really passionate about. He spends quality time with his friends, family, reads books and does his research on running. At the end of the day, He would look himself in the mirror and feel really satisfied because he know that he's getting closer and closer to his dreams. Now John is mentally physically fit and he is happy while Kid is not. They may have difference in the character but the major difference in their life is that John have a dream while Kid does not. John know what he is destined to do. But the question is how do we know what we are destined to do? This is how we can It would be something which we would be naturally attracted towards and the first time we come in contact with that we will have a taste of success. The first race that John won was a 3000 meter race and it's a kind of race which most kids just don't participate because it requires a lot of stamina and endurance. And the only reason why John tried it was he enjoyed running. And the appreciation that he received that day has always been his motivation to push him harder. It is called the beginner's luck. because there's a force in the world which want you to realize your destiny and it whets your appetite with the taste of success fear is bigger obstacle than the obstacle itself once we know what we are destined to do we need to take the step we need to take the action but what prevents us from doing that is fear we are afraid that we may fail one year before i used to go to a public speaking club because i wanted to overcome my fear of public speaking And every day I would tell myself that today I'm going to deliver the speech which I've been preparing for such a long time. But the moments before I was about to do that, I could feel my whole body shivering like anything. I was scared like hell and I couldn't do that. But the moments after the class was over, it was even worse because my own image was getting worse day by day. I was feeling like a coward. But one day, I somehow gathered the courage to deliver the speech and do you know what happened? I failed. I went completely blank on the stage. I had to start over again and again. But when everything was over, it felt so good. It felt so good because I had this feeling that I was carrying with me a huge burden for a long time and now I am free from that. It felt so good. And my speech got better and better with days. Tell your heart that the fear of suffering is worse than the suffering itself. And no heart had ever suffered when it goes in search of its dreams. Relationship should never hinder passion and pursuance of a dream. Once we have overcome our fear of failure, the second obstacle that can stop us is love itself. Now, have you heard similar statements like I couldn't follow my dreams because my parents were not supportive or I'm not successful because I had too many responsibilities. We know what we want to do, 
but are afraid of hurting those around us by abandoning everything in order to pursue our dream. Years before, a friend of mine's mother got an offer from a reputed school and she was really passionate about teaching. But she had to turn down that offer because she was about to give birth to my friend. And in the beginning she had no problem with her decision but with time she started growing her frustration. But by then she had already accepted one of the biggest lies in the world which is that at a certain point of her life we lose control of what's happening to us and our life gets controlled by faith. And she started showing her frustration each time she had a conflict with her daughter. She would talk about the sacrifice that she had made for her. But the truth was, she could have resumed her career at any time but she did not. The obstacle of love has been an excuse for people for a long time. Love has justified why we don't follow our dreams. But what we need to understand is that love is not something which would prevent us from going forward and those who genuinely wish us well wants us to be happy and are ready to accompany us on our journey. The secret of happiness is the balance between your purpose and the enjoyable things in your life. In the pursuit of your dreams, you should not fail to enjoy the small and beautiful things that life gifts you with. When someone decides to follow his dreams, he is actually diving into a strong current that will take him to places that he had never been before, to people that he had never met, to the discovery of his own character that he never knew existed in him, all of which helps in a better understanding of the world so that he can enjoy life better. Enjoy life better, being happy it is the core purpose of having a dream. Because your dreams will expose you to things that average person does not get to. A person who works for hours in the office and don't have time to spend with his children, he may be a good worker but not a good father. A person who works miserably towards his goals for years without enjoying anything else, he may attain his goals but he have not understood the essence of having a dream. What we want is the balance between the two. So next time you are traveling somewhere, instead of considering it as moving from point A to B, Consider it as a journey or a ride in which you would see and feel many beautiful things, but always to keep an eye on the road. Never ever give up. Every search starts with beginner's luck and every search ends with the victor being severely tested. Now if I make the list of few successful people like Steve Jobs, Beethoven and Nelson Mandela, how we see them is like an iceberg in the middle of an ocean. Because we only see the section which is visible to us, like Steve Jobs was the founder and CEO of Apple Computers. Beethoven was one of the most famous musical composers in the world and Nelson Mandela was the president of South Africa who was awarded Nobel Prize for Peace. But what we fail to see is the section of the iceberg which is really huge and invisible to us. Steve Jobs was fired from his own company at the age of 30. Beethoven was completely deaf when he composed four of his greatest works and Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for 27 years before he became the president of South Africa. Even the first edition of Alchemist only sold 900 copies and the publishing house decided not to reprint it anymore. Now 900 to 65 million copies requires a never giving up attitude. Remember, before a dream is realized the world tests everything that was learned along the way. It does this not because it is evil. But in addition to realizing our dreams, we master the skills that was learned along the way. And that's the point at which most people give up. The darkest hours are always before the dawn. Value the journey Alchemist is a fictional book and according to the book, alchemy is the process of changing a base metal like lead into gold by heating and purifying it for years. But only very few are able to do that while others failed and the reason is this. Those who failed were only interested in gold that they were not ready to take the time or effort to become an alchemist. Most people just won't find the treasure because all they want is treasure that they are not ready to take the journey to their destinies. Now I remember reading an interview of Andrew Carnegie. Andrew Carnegie was one of the most successful businessmen of his time and this is what he said. Take away everything from me. My money, my machine, my factory, my business, everything and give me 4 years and I will get it all back again. Because his confidence does not come from the material things that he owned, but it comes from the knowledge and experience that he have gained through years of hard work. A bird sitting on a tree is never afraid of the branch breaking, because its trust is not on the branch, but in its own wings. When you know what your destiny is and decide to take the journey, the material things that you are going to get at the end of your journey is not the real treasure, it is you growing and becoming a stronger version of yourself and that's something you would carry with yourself for the rest of your life 
and that's the real treasure of going after dreams.